no pun intended, but he was bitten by the bug to say, I want to do this. I want to take this to the highest degree. And he did. He went ahead and studied all the herbal colleges throughout North America. He went ahead and studied Ayurvedic medicine. He went ahead and actually studied with a number of Native American tribes in North America and was actually adopted into several of these. I have the certificates. Um, it's really interesting. When he wanted to study Chinese medicine, he didn't do it normally. He doesn't do anything normally, I'll tell you that much right now. He does it all the way. And this guy went ahead and sought out the number one herbal master on the planet and brought him to the United States so he could study at his feet. Well, that wasn't even enough. His master said to him, Josh, you need to get a, an actual doctorate in Chinese medicine. It's an eight-year degree, but you got to do it. And Josh said, of course. Well, this guy is so brilliant, he accomplished it in four. Is that pretty good? I mean, it's insane stuff. So this is the guy that these two colleagues of mine wanted me to meet that they portrayed as some guy digging herbs in the backyard. I don't think so. So I kind of dished out on the meeting. He met with my business partner at the time. And uh, the two guys did not get along. Let's just put it that way. So what happened was I showed up just as the meeting was finishing up. And I walked over to this guy. And I said, are you Josh Woodcom? And he goes, yes, I am. How would you know this? I said, you're the healthiest looking guy here. And he laughed. Now, guys, I was the most unhealthy looking guy there because I weighed 150 kilos at the time. I dropped 70. So you need to understand what that dynamic was. Healthy, not healthy in one place. It was weird. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, when I looked at this guy, we sat down and instantly had this amazing connection. And we talked for five and a half hours. I learned so many things in that time. It was amazing. He said, we need to do something together. I said, let's keep in touch. Well, an interesting thing happened. My business partner of 10 years went on a walkabout and never came back. He literally walked off the planet. I talked to him at uh, 11 o'clock in the morning. I called him back at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Didn't answer the phone. It's six years later. He still has that. <laughs> so I figured I'd give him a couple weeks, and then I said, OK, that's done and gone. So I called up Josh, and I said, are you still interested in this bird thing? And he says, yes, I am. Absolutely. And I said, great. Well, what we need to do is, you know, I need to do my due diligence. As a marketing guy, I do some serious, serious due diligence. So I said, send me everything. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, literally, send me everything. Every piece of paper you have, everything that you know, and send me a bunch of products so I can, you know, do my own due diligence. And he did. And he sent me cases and cases and cases of all kinds of products. So I read all the material and I was stunned at the fact that this guy was, is the real deal. No question. Six generations, 200 years of history. It doesn't exist on this planet pretty much, if at all. So I looked at that and I said, okay, the next step is what I need to do is I need to go ahead and uh, send product out to everyone I know, which is what I did. And I said, okay. I sent a little love note with each bottle of product. Hey, I'm looking at this company. Try this stuff out. Let me know what happens. I sent out menopause. I sent prostate. I sent colon. I sent pain formula. I sent heart formula. Everywhere. And I figured, you know, I give it two weeks and I start calling people. I never had the opportunity, folks. For the first time in my 20-year career in the marketing industry, I didn't have to do anything. It did it by itself. Here's what I mean. People were calling me by the dozens and then by the hundreds. I had sent out 600 bottles of product, 100 of six different varieties. 
and I received an astonishing 581 calls. <laughs> Folks, that's insanity. I don't even know what to say about that. If I had 50, I'd be jumping up and down. 581 people responded to these gifts that I sent out, and they were truly gifts. I got call after call after call from people in tears telling me how wonderful this stuff is it first it was. First one was uh, a friend of mine, the first guy that called me was a friend of mine from Florida, in the United States. He called up and he's got this New Jersey accent. He goes, Stan, I love you. And I go, I love you too, but why do you love me today? He said, because, you know, you sent Chicky a bottle of that menopause stuff. And she hasn't slept in four years. We haven't slept in the same room. To too much information. Four years. And I said, um, yeah. I don't know what we're doing, but okay. Oh, thank you so much. Be careful, you're not going to have enough room. I have thought about standing, but I'm going to sit. Thanks. It's coming jet lag. That's okay. Um, anyway, so I, you know, I looked at this and I said, you know, it was Chicky. <laughs> Chicky, not you, Chicky. Chicky was this guy's wife. That's her name, not this girl, Chicky. Um, Chicky, what's going on? Uh, you know, she doesn't have any more hot flashes. Everything's cool. I love you, man. It's wonderful. I said, great. And I got calls from people who have heart issues. I got calls from people who have pain. I got calls from all of this stuff. And once I realized how amazing this was, 581 phone calls. I was freaking out, guys, seriously. You have no idea. And I called up Josh, and I said, are you serious about this? And he goes, as a heart attack. He said, great. I'm coming out. Pick me up. So he picked me up in Salt Lake City at the airport. And uh, we got together. And I said, look <coughs> me in the eyes. Look me in the eyes and tell me what this is about. I want you all to look me in the eyes right now. Because I'm going to tell you what this is all about as well. It's about helping people get healthy and helping people get well. That was the idea behind all of this. He told me, it's all about my legacy, that I must, that I'm compelled, compelled to continue. I'm compelled to help as many people across all the oceans, across all the land masses, across everything, get well. And I go, okay. <laughs> I got good news and I got bad news. What do you want first? He goes, give me the good news. I said, it's going to work. 581 people called me. I didn't call anyone. He goes, okay, what's the bad news? And I said, okay, the bad news is we have to do this in the format of network marketing. We have to do this. He goes, I hate network marketing. I said, well, the legacy and everything prevails that the marketing method is an absolute, oh, can I Jordan? Uh, the marketing method has to match the product. Thank you. It always has to, it always will, in order for it to work. And to get this amazing story out, people have to tell it in the only format is this <laughs> network marketing. <laughs> How many people felt that way? <laughs> people who are not raising their hands are not telling the truth. <laughs> okay. Absolutely, because network marketing, we poo-poo that. Why do we poo-poo that? Anybody? We've heard before. We've heard before. What else? Uh, it what? It's hard. It's hard. I'm sorry, the accent got me. It's hard work. <laughs> hard work. What else? Ripped off. 
Ripped off. What else? Usually approached by your friends with dollars in their eyes. <laughs> dollars in their eyes and what? But they don't know what they're talking about because they want to present you a business opportunity. They, they wouldn't do business if it hit them in the head, right? How many people have had that experience? I've had it every single time. You know, raise your hands. I'm American. Humor me. I flew in here. Come on. All right. Thank you. So here's the, here's the situation. We had this conversation that was like this for three days, okay? Because his goal set was to help people get the products out. But we had to do it in the right way. And we looked at network marketing and he says, I hate network marketing. I go, so do I. Not that I'm not good at it. I've been at the top of several companies as a consultant, as a distributor, as a principal, and so on and so on. You know, I know the industry. But the industry, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to be as candid as I can with you tonight. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you mind if I just tell it like it is? Yeah. The industry sucks. <laughs> you know, there's a bunch of rip-offs. This is what everybody said here. There's one word that prevails in the network marketing industry, and I get my head cut off on this from the industry all the time. It's about greed. Yeah. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about distributors. It's not about helping people make money. It's about taking money out of distributors' pockets and having the principals of the company or the company their hands in your pockets. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. We looked at that and we debated this for three days. Josh had prepared a list of things that he hated about network marketing. There were 15 items, okay? And I looked at the list and I, he made me agree to the list before we would do anything any further step, and I agreed to it. I said, we need to condense it a little bit because there's a couple of duplications here. He agreed to that. So we changed the list of 15 items to 11, which today we affectionately refer to as our 11 commandments. <coughs> I want you guys to write this down if you don't have this uh, website. MANA, M-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, the number four, Y-O-U, MANA4U.com. That is our due diligence site. That is for people to check us out. That is for people to check out the products. It's got videos for all the products, all kinds of cool stuff in that regard. It's got a bunch of other videos and different things relative to conduct due diligence. That's the purpose of MANA for you. On there, it's the 11 commandments. We're not gonna show it, we're not gonna deal with it tonight. If you haven't watched it, go home and watch it tonight because what it does it is the heart and soul of what man is all about so I'm just going to ask you all if you're serious and if you're here tonight listening to this crazy guy you are serious I want you to spend the 32 minutes and watch that can I have that agreement all with it? because that's going to go through all of them and you're going to understand it the number one uh, item that Josh referred to, and you guys are going to relate to this, was the fact that the products had to be affordable. If people can't buy them, how are you going to make any money? How is it going to work? It doesn't make sense. Would you all agree? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is a jar of the one. Most of you have seen this, I hope. The one is our whole food greens product. It's got 106 minerals, all that cool stuff. I'm not going to talk about products tonight. We've got a bunch of due diligence material on that site. There's a webinar that we do every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. where you have the number one guy in the world live for an hour to three. Yeah. Yeah. We know this. You know, you put a quarter in and it keeps going, but it's all, it's all, it's all amazing stuff. So I, I really, 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 yeah. Anyway. So this is a jar of the greens, as we call it. The reason we call it greens, folks, is because it's green. You know, it's that simple. And it's got a bunch of green vegetables and cool stuff in there. But anyway, uh, this is a jar of it, and it's $80, $79.95 US. That is a true retail price point. If you go to, what is it, Mrs. Flanagan's? Is that your? Flannery's. Flannery's. Mrs. Flannery's here in Australia, you're going to see three or four different types from between $60 to $100 for a tub. $80 is the retail price point. 
Josh, this is version five of the greens. Version four is in our other company. Version uh, two and three were in a couple other network marketing companies that Josh had them in a few years back. They sold this for between $180 and $240. Are you kidding me? How is that sustainable in any way, shape, or form? It's only about greed and having people reach into your pockets because there's all kinds of funny stuff. Anyway, Josh said to me, Stan, make this work at $80 and I'm in. And I go, oh my God. <laughs> I took, it took me three weeks. I worked it, worked it, worked it, worked it, and I finally figured it out. It was pretty simple. I called him up and I said, Josh, you own the manufacturing, right? He said, yeah. I said, you can't have a profit on the manufacturing. It's got to go from cost into man. Can you do that? He goes, yes. I said, number two, you absolutely get a royalty for everything that you do, as any creator of any product in the network park environment does. You know, per jar, per percent, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Um, you have to wait that because it won't work. He goes, if you can make it work, and every single product that follows this, I'm in. I said, I can't. So we did. And uh, we went ahead, and uh, I went back to LA, and I started building the brand and doing the stuff. I realized we needed a little bit of a, of a kick. And the little kick was another brand to off-sell and take away the stigma of network marketing. Makes sense? <coughs> so I created a second brand. It's called Doc Flowers. Many of you know what that is. Yeah. I don't know if you have any here, but that's okay. Yeah. If you have just a jar, thank you. Coming your way. Thank you. Oh, okay. uh, no, nah, something. Second half. Okay. <laughs> That's okay, that's, that's what I need. The one thing I don't say. Um, <laughs> it's menopause products. Here's some nuggets, Thank you. As you can see here, there's a little photo of this nice gentleman. This nice gentleman. This gentleman here is Josh's great great grandfather, Isaac Newton Curry, one of the best herbalists that's ever lived. Grandpa number two, we call him. And Grandpa number two is uh, trained, or is trained, I mean his, his teachings and so on, are trained in all of the herbal colleges throughout North America. Anyway, I felt inappropriate to name the company after this amazing guy. Would you all agree? Here's why. Here's why it works. He used to walk around with these satchels full of uh, herbs, and the satchels uh, had uh, you know herbs in it, and sometime during the year they were flowering. So the Native Americans called him Doctor Flowers. Okay. So to make it a little bit more contemporary, I named it Doc Flowers. Kind of cool. So we have this brand, and what we use this brand for is testing new products or what we call one-offs. If it's something that you cannot make money in network marketing, it goes into this company. Let me give you an example. We have an amazing pain formula. Amazing pain formula. And we hope you'll never finish a bottle of it because that would mean you have a lot of pain, right? So it's not something that distributors can make money in network marketing. Would that make sense? Yes. Same thing with our allergy product. Our allergy product I remember about four years ago, I had this horrific allergy. I was sneezing, I was carrying on, I was doing all these crazy things. And um, I said, cool, I get to try the allergy product. So I took five, waited 15 minutes, took five, waited 15 minutes, took five, waited 15 minutes. And my allergies were gone. I haven't sneezed or coughed or anything in four years. I took 15 only. Oh that was it. So, can distributors make money selling 15 capsules? I don't think so. So, those will stay in this type of format. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But we use this for entering into new markets. When we came to uh, Australia, this charming young lady that's hiding over there in the corner, Nicole Davey, sat in my office four years ago and she said, I want to help some people. So I threw the bottle at her and I said, hey, go sell that stuff. 
then she did. She cruised around all over and did a phenomenal job, and it was kind of the direction on how everything got together, and we flipped it into man and so on. But anyway, it's a great tool to start into countries. We did this in New Zealand before we launched New Zealand three weeks ago, four weeks ago. The concept, I'm not going to say was brilliant because it was my concept, and I don't take credit for those things, but I've been told something about it like that. So it, the reason is because a lot of network marketing companies want to rip distributors off, so what do they do? They take the products and they go ahead and they sell it retail, they put it in shops, they do all kinds of things to take money out of the pockets of distributors. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We don't do that. We have two separate brands for the purposes of, of seeding a market and building a business. So give me an example. We promote Doc Flowers all over the world. We get calls from people all over the world on a daily basis, something to the effect of this. This is my favorite one, so I use this story all the time. Guy called me from Great Britain, near, near London. He had a colon problem. He had a bowel problem. He couldn't go to the bathroom correctly for three years. He went to doctors, naturopaths, chiropractors, took all kinds of products, did all kinds of stuff with no success and no results. So he stumbled upon Doc Flowers and he bought three bottles of the product. And he told me, because he called and he got connected to me. I took <coughs> six the first night I got the bottles. I took six the second night. I took six the third night. And the fourth morning, my life changed forever. I had a catastrophic event so great that my plumber had to call a plumber. <laughs> I'm, I'm cleaning it up a little bit. <laughs> so this guy immediately says, can I make some money with this Doc Flower stuff? I said, absolutely not. But he can with our sister company, the network market, well, with our sister company, man. He asked the question, obviously. Is that network marketing? <laughs> I go, yes it is. He goes, I hate network marketing. <laughs> and what does he do? He starts spitting out a list of things that he hates, right? Uh -huh. Well, wouldn't you know that this list coincides directly with the 11 commandments? When we got to the end, he goes, oh, this stuff works, I'm in. So we get orphans. What's an orphan? Somebody that's disconnected or doesn't have a sponsor. Somebody that you know, walks in off the street and figures out man is here. You know, y'all you you with me on that? Yeah. So what do we do with that? We do absolutely diametrically opposite what every other company in the world does. What do we do? We give them to our distributors. If you're working and you're building a business in man, guess what? You get this little gift. You know, not every day, not every week. Uh, the the uh, CFO of the company gives me a list every morning, not every morning, every Monday of who's working and does the orphans come in, bing, 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 that's how we do it. Folks, I guarantee you, no other company in the world does it. What do they do? They give it to their friends, they stash it in their pocket, it's about money, 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 it's about grief. No, that's not what we do. Anyway, that's how this all came into place. So here's the question. Why are we here tonight? Why are we here tonight? Well, I'll tell you why I'm here. I wanted to come to Australia, so I'm here. <laughs> I'm going to check out the beaches, all the cool stuff. So, I love it. Thank you. And Bob can go somewhere else. You know. Anyway. Um, no, I'll tell you why I'm here. I'm here tonight because I'm the CEO of the company. I'm the founder. The buck stops right here. And I love what's going on in Australia. I love the people. I love what you folks, I mean some of you that are obviously our distributors, are doing. And I'm here to do something rather substantial and rather specific. And that is teach and show people how to get money out of the way. Now what does that mean? Okay? Money 
is money. Money pays for the house, it pays for the car, it pays for the kids, it pays for the food. Yeah, not that you were sick, but if you wanted to watch Howdy Doody or movies or whatever is on TV down here. You know, every single day you could. You could. Where your income is at a particular level in a passive residual manner. I'm not talking about anything other than that. This is, this is a type of income that less than one half of one percent of the population of the world even knows about, much less achieves. This is where income continues regardless of what happens. Okay? How many people would enjoy that type of income and, and tell their boss to go take a hike and never do that? Okay? We we have we have a saying in the States, we want to go ahead and fire our boss. We want to give them a pink slip. How many people would be up for that? That's why I'm here in Australia. That's why I'm here in Australia. May I tell you a little, a little side story about this? You guys mind? Okay. You do mind? Oh. Alright. Yeah, I'll figure it out one way or another. Give me, give me another couple days to act. Alright. Alright. Uh, about 18 or 19 years ago, something like that, um, I had a partner, and she had a father who was a medical doctor, and he was 89 years old at a particular time. And I went over to their house, like to his house, and this was just before Christmas, whatever year that was. And I'm chatting with him, which I did, you know, every once in a while. And all of a sudden I said, oh my God something weird about him. He's always been odd, but this was really odd. I looked at him and I go, are you okay? He goes, no. I said, are you okay? He goes, yes. And I said, oh, sure. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's really not funny. Uh, I, I was testing, I was actually testing it. It sounded funny, but it wasn't really funny. I went and got a clock, an analog clock, and I stuck it in front of him and I said, what time is it? He says, I have no idea. It's gone. Also, he has got dementia. And I called my partner, I said, get over here right now. I called her sister, get over here right now. And I said, you guys need to understand, we've got a problem. And we've got a big problem right now. And he, we took him to a specialist right then and there. And he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's dementia. And guys, he was a practicing medical doctor. He was seeing 75 patients a day. <laughs> I don't know how it is in Australia, but in the States, there's this real, it's probably similar because TJ and all that jazz, but there's a process of shutting down a medical practice. It's very extensive. You need to find a doctor to take over the patients. You need to go ahead and um, uh, refer them out. You need to notify them by phone and by uh, either electronic mail or by letter, whatever, and so on. We went to the office. We started looking at files. <laughs> this had been going on for years. The files were, I don't even know, I, I can't even describe it. It was that bad. So the family got together and said, this is a monumental task to go through and do this. Who's gonna do it? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? you know, we, we did this exercise. And I waited and waited and waited and I said, I got this. They look at me and go, like, I make $10,000 a week passive residual income I can do this for two months, and if it takes two months, two months later, my income will be more. <laughs> and my partner's sister, who's an attorney, looked at me like I was crazy because she had worked for 30 years in the same place and didn't understand that you could do something like this. Does that make sense, everybody? <laughs> So I proceeded to empty out the lounge room and put 4,200 <coughs> files on the floor and go through them and do all this 
work, which we did. It took eight weeks. Okay? How about that? Is that cool? It had to be done. Someone had to do it, and there's laws and things to do that, but, you know, here we are. Folks, God forbid, bless you, there's a catastrophic event. God forbid something happens to somebody. And you have to change. You have to do something. This man, sweetest man on the earth, there was this experimental procedure that was only available in Germany. It took 10 days. And I'll go, who's going to take him? I'll go, guys, when you don't have to punch a clock, go into work, go into a schedule, do things that you don't want to do. Guess what you're able to do? Can anybody tell me? Whatever you want, when you want. That's what I'm here to teach tonight. That's what I'm going to do Thursday night in Brisbane. And we're going to do something a little different tomorrow night because one of the key things that Man of Heaven is about is women's rights. Women's ability to take care of themselves. Women's ability to go ahead and not be challenged financially. Not be stuck into a particular situation. And I gotta tell you, it's fascinating. Um, in MANA, we have a 50% higher ratio of women in MANA than any other network marketing company. The typical ratio is 60%-ish. You know, 60% women, 40% men. We have 91% women. Why? I can't tell you. But we do. But I've talked to a lot of women that are in MANA, and I've been told something rather interesting. MANA is a safe haven. Why is that? Because we care. We are nurturing. We are developing. We care about people. And it's something that's attractive in that regard. Does that make sense? Ladies, men, right? This is something near and dear to my heart and Josh's heart. So what we're going to do tomorrow night at Gold Coast is go through some stuff specifically. Men are allowed to come, guys. It's not for women only. Men are allowed to come. It's just a women's initiative direction, okay? So, you know, if you're inclined, please come. Anyway. And then I'm going to do this again on uh, Thursday night in Brisbane. But here's, here's what I'm, what I'm going to do. We're building a team across Australia of like-minded people that love people, that like to help people, and notwithstanding, in the process, want to retire themselves. What does that mean? I don't mean sit around the couch. I don't mean do all that. What I mean is get money out of the way. I'm not talking big, bad, ugly money stuff. I'm talking get it away so you can do the things that you want to do. Get it away so you can help people if you're so inclined. Obviously, that's what we're looking for and that's what we do. If you don't want to help people, the door swings both ways, go. Seriously. I mean, this is about helping people and taking it to a whole nother level. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, I talk plainly, hopefully. I talk directly, and I tell it like it is. That's what we're here to do. We're here to join arms together with you folks and people like you and people that you know. Walk across Australia, walk across New Zealand, and help people get healthy, and help people get wealthy in the same fashion. Now, what does that mean? Simple. What we're going to do is I'm going to talk for a couple more minutes, and we're going to take just a quick break. And for, for folks that they are not interested in the dynamic of what I'm talking about, don't want to waste any more of your time. But I'm going to spend about an hour and a half to two hours going through how to do this specifically what this company has to offer and direct you to do by simply introducing. We don't want salespeople. It's not about salespeople. It's about making introductions. It's about helping other people.
people because I got to tell you, if I can find, hopefully I have my fat picture here, but you know, for those of you who haven't seen it, I mean, I'm half the man I used to be. You know, that's really how and what this is about. So, what I'm really saying is this. I'm here to build a team. It's going to start with 100 people. It's going to start with a group like this, if you're so inclined. I will personally teach you and show you, step by step, word for word, how to do this. How to introduce the most amazing products that have ever been developed on this God's earth to help people get healthy and take people to a level of health improvement as well as wealth improvement. Really very simple, it's really very straightforward, and it's really very direct. And I will answer questions, and I will take it all the way, because guess what? The buck stops here. This is my buddy Bob. Bob is wonderful, but this is the CEO of the company. The buck stops here. And if you want to know what you want to know, that's what I'm here to tell you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. All right, guys, I love you. We're going to take a, a, really a 10 minute break, and then I'm going to go into a training. I'm going to go into the specifics. I'm going to show you the tools. I'm going to show you the direction of how to build an organization and how we do this together. And, you know, during the 10 minutes, if you have a quick question or whatever, pop up and chat with me. Thank you.